Welcome to the Charleston CFO Council. This organization was co-founded in 2015 by Robert Benetti and Mark Carmichael in order to provide a networking and educational forum for senior financial executives to share best practices, to discuss current financial issues, and to learn about current topics related to the performance of their job. Frank Wells, good afternoon, sir. How are you doing? Fantastic, Robert Benetti. How are you? In the, in the Holy City Medical Center, I can see up in that corner up there some medical devices. This is legit. Get my, get my ear checked out if I needed to. <laughs> Frank, I am running out of the hand sanitizer. We are in near desperate time, sir. Uh, we have to have a physical meeting <laughs> soon uh, because I am down to my last single spritzer and it's getting dangerous. Yep. We, we, we still have plenty here in the clinic. And if you stop by the clinic and ask for one while supplies last, one per adult, uh, we'll give them to you for free. <laughs> Bam. All right. You heard it here, folks. Well, Frank Wells is the founder and CEO, like the shirt says, of Holy City Medical and co-founder Renew Medical uh, IV Spa. If you get a little dehydrated in your downtown Charleston, have a really good time, maybe too good of a time on the down low during uh, then you go there. He also got his undergrad from College of Charleston and MBA from University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Is that correct, sir? Go Heels. Yes, sir. And one thing I know about Frank Wells that maybe the rest of the group doesn't know is that when I was living in Atlanta, we had a little thing called the Olympics. and you were very involved in the Olympics in Atlanta around the 1996 time period. Is that correct, sir? Man, it was a ball. We had 2,300 staff and volunteers uh, running an operation in the Olympic Village. It was, a, it was a lot of fun. Well, you did a great job. My wife was one of those volunteers, and at one of the breakfasts, she saw you walk by. She was like, that's Frank Wells. <laughs> And I was like, oh, is he like a wanted criminal or something? I would turn him in. And she was like, oh, no, he was the head volunteer and staff guy at the Olympics, blah, 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 blah. So uh, really? that's not Did she know me from the Olympics? Yes, sir. That's hilarious. What, what did, where did she volunteer? I had eight divisions I was uh, responsible for. She would have been in what would have been like uh, uh, security because she was – a customs agent at the time. Uh, she was in college still, okay. she was doing some sort of volunteer work. And um, I think she was doing light security and it was around the athlete village. Okay, well, we were in the athlete's village. A little known fact, my wife and I had our wedding, one of our wedding receptions in the Olympic village. We think we may be one of the few. We got married on the day of opening ceremonies because everyone left the village and we had some time where we could actually get married and before all the athletes and coaches came back. Wow, that's very cool. Yeah. Question number one, Frank, what is your favorite business book and why? Uh, well, it's really comes, information coming out of the Bible. Uh, there's a business by the book by Crown Ministries, but 18% of the Bible is about money and possession. So it's about stewardship and how to manage stuff. And, uh, you know, it's said that it's, because we're either going to worship money or worship God. So that's why there's so much instruction there about how to manage stuff. So it doesn't get in the way of our relationship with uh, God. Mm. Oh, that's true. And uh, it's not the, uh, it's not money is evil, the love of money. And it's easy right. to turn to money and have money as comfort instead of, uh, of our Lord that should be our comfort. So. Yeah, money is a tool, a great resource, right? To uh, be a blessing, not to uh, be worshiped. So. That's good advice for us all to hear. Uh, number two, speaking of advice, what is the best advice that you have ever received? You, you know, the one I quote over and over, Zig Ziglar. There's probably 20,000 Zig Ziglar quotes, but uh, the main one I like is um, help enough other people get what they want and you'll get what you want. So That's awesome. That's He's, I, he's a, just a quote factory when he was here with us on Earth. Um, Question number three, Frank, what is something that you have recently started doing or 
a tool you have recently started using that you have found beneficial and tell us a little bit about it. Um, the tool, well, probably our video medical visits. We started it for the community because a lot of the food and beverage, hospitality, travel, hotel people are out of work. So we started these video medical visits and then we decided to do them free for all the people who lost their job. So, um, you know, if an employer sends us a list of people and a birth date so we can identify them, we'll, we'll see them free over video uh, for their medical visits. We were going to do it about a year from now anyway after we had enough uh, clients to kind of have that need. And uh, obviously the need, uh, the timing of that need changed dramatically, so. It's awesome, and I've done uh, like the teledoc a couple of times. I've just been like so sick, I didn't even want to go in, but I needed a prescription. And it is, uh, it is awesome to just like, you know, be in your PJs, but put kind of a clean shirt on. And I was on my phone. I just had my phone and I kind of teledocked with the, and they, they looked and they did some stuff and then they called me in some prescription cough medicine. It was, it was a godsend. And that's really nice and a blessing for the Charleston community that you're doing it for free for folks that have been impacted and lost their job. Kudos. Good job to you, hey, sir. And you know, the docs say it's so, it's way better than a telephone visit, you know, where you're just hearing, getting the audio. If you can actually see somebody and say, Hey, look at this rash on my arm or yeah. um, so that you can see if they're well, or if they're really not so well and they need to go to the ER. So it's so a cool tool. What is the best part about your current job? Well, it's people. You know how I love people. So we have so much fun. We're, we're at the CFO Council because I love to laugh because it's good medicine for you when you laugh. It reduces, it releases endorphins. And so uh, I just love being around the people. The, the people I'm here, our team here, I've known for a while some of the folks followed me from the prior urgent primary care where I was for 12 years, and um, they're just the best of the best. Um, we, we think we're doing something a little differently. Our, our mission, our values, and our principles are uh, um, slightly tweaked from what I did before because we're able to design it ourselves. So just being around great people that really love to serve other people, they communicate with excellence, and they really love solving problems instead of just recognizing problems. We, we like to say like 80% of the people can say, hey, look, the chair is broken. It's only about 20% that can say it's broken and here's how I fixed it. And mm -hmm. So our people are fantastic. Frank, what is something you'd like to share about yourself that maybe members of the council don't know? Uh, probably the why. So, um, <laughs> why I wanted to start always sitting that I could have basically, uh, you know, taken the money, invested it, and just kind of taken a job for the for another 10 years until I hit 65 or so. But uh, why is it that there's got to be a way to make healthcare affordable and easily accessible and still have high quality? And so we've been able to do that here, being very specific about speed, about affordability, and about quality. And just one example is our doctors and facilities are all ER trained. When they come into the room and they're looking at you for what's the worst thing that could happen. And once they figure out, you know, you're not going to die, you don't have any meningitis or heart failure, pending, they can then treat the symptoms you're there for. And, and uh, it just makes a lot of sense. But our, you know, healthcare affordability has not been there for a long time. We kind of need to be able to do that and, um, you know, Try to do it in our local community. I mean, my clinic, right where I'm sitting right now, is three miles from where my mom still lives in my college. Oh, so cool to be able to do that where I grew up. Very cool. Question number six. It happened fast, Frank. Last question. What is something that I should have asked, but I didn't? And what's your answer to that? Um, well, I think I think I have a quote on my LinkedIn profile that says um, something like serving is the greatest gift. And um, it's because in serving, you actually um, not only get a chance to help somebody else, but you also get to feel better about yourself. So it's kind of a win-win. Right? People that are struggling and they're um, you know, worried about their own circumstance, and then they go volunteer or they do a mission trip somewhere. And they figure out that there's such a gift in, in taking care of somebody else. And when we get something also, I mean, why wouldn't you uh, spend your whole life serving 
Um, and, and I do it separately because I like the feeling of serving. But, uh, you know, there's, there's good for both. So. Amen, Frank. Well, that was awesome. We learned some new tips. There's some new stuff about you. And Frank, I noticed in a theme here, it's servant leadership. You're a servant leader in the community with all the volunteering that you do. Servant leader in your new business at Holy City Medical. And then back in the day in hot Atlanta, when I was there and my wife was there, you were serving Atlanta and the state of Georgia, bringing the Olympics to, to Atlanta. So thank you very much for your continued efforts. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks, Robert. Have a great day. You too.